first talk about the Mets and the Nationals, uh, where the Mets are about a 230 favorite. The total on that one is eight and a half, minus a buck ten either way. Jeff and I both have some serious thoughts on this one. And let's start with you, Jeff. We look at the battle between Scherzer and Corbin. Not exactly uh, a great year for Mr. Patrick Corbin. Your thoughts on this particular outing? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, over the sample size, I, I think it's hard to find a pitcher worse than Patrick Corbin this season in baseball. I mean, for a guy that has 21 starts, I mean, this guy's been atrocious. And, you know, May, June, you know, we're bad, but July's been even worse. You look at this guy in July. I mean, 23 innings, opponents are in 370 off of him. He's got a whip of two. Um, he, he's just a disaster. He's got an ERA at eight. Uh, it seems like every night he gives up five, six runs. Uh, this guy's bad. You look at his numbers against the Mets, particularly against this lineup, he's given up 14 home runs as far as on this roster. That's a lot of home runs to give up. Uh, he's just not someone I, I want to back. He's not some, he's one of someone I want to fade, quite frankly. And again, this has been a long season for him. It's very rare that he pitches well. Um, I'm going to just bank on the fact that he doesn't pitch well here. And again, last four starts, 10.80 RA, 2.35 whip. That's hard to do. Uh, and look, 2018, this guy was an all-star. It has been a complete descend uh, south for Patrick Corbin. Throw in the fact this is a bad bullpen with uh, – and I look, I know maybe they've been a bit better lately, but we all know they're going to move Juan Soto at some point. This team is, I think, what, 20 games under 500 more than that. I think maybe even higher than that. Um, I'll lay the four-and-a-half runs here. I think the fact that I'm getting four-and-a-half runs – uh, give me it over four and a half. This is a great Mets lineup. Should have any trouble getting a Corbin, a guy they beat up. Yeah, it's funny, Mark, because I'm looking at this game and I was talking with my little group last night. There's about four or five of us that are always texting back and forth or doing conference calls when we handicap games. And you know, first of all, I'm surprised. I mean, this shows you how bad Washington is that we still get to bet against Corbin if we want to. And he's obviously one of those guys you either bet against or you stay away from the game as far as the sides are concerned. And you know, one of the guys on the phone call said, well, he is a little bit better at home. He kind of said tug in cheek. He is a little bit better at home than he is on the road. I'm like, yeah, well, it's kind of like saying the Nats are a little bit better at home than they are on the road, 19 and 30 versus 16 and, and 38. Uh, Jeff, you know, he's he's locking in on this one with the uh, over, what, over four and a half, Jeff, on the team total for the New York Mets. And I'm going to kind of come in right here and, and be on the Mets, my best bet for today, the Mets minus a run and a half. Uh, laying a buck 40 on this one. But Mark, I wanted to get your thoughts because, you know, Washington, I think in 17 defeats with Corbett on the mound out of those 17 defeats, they've won, uh, they've covered the run line just three times. So, and then on the flip side, you've got the Mets in nine wins with Scherzer on the mound. They've covered the run line seven times. And I don't always like laying the run line, but I feel a smidge better when that run line is a team that's on the road. I get that ninth inning bat, uh, at bat no matter what. Yeah, it's hard. You know, when when you look at something like this and, you know, we just talked about, you know, laying minus 200 and how it's been profitable. And it's really hard, I think, in sports betting to find a profitable just when you're blanket bet, like blanket bet this situation that that has a, a sample size that's like worth like anything. And so we have this sample size. that's like over a thousand games where you're winning money just looking at the at the favorites. And you look at this game and you're and if you, I'm just trying to make a case for Corbin and it's really hard to do. Um, and I honestly can't do it. So, like, I'm kind of with you guys. Like, I've got it priced at minus 216. So, like, from a just from a strict pricing standpoint, I don't really see a lot of value in the game. But, like, I, I can't go again. Like, I'm looking at Corbin. Like, OK, he, he went seven innings against Miami. He went six against uh, the Braves. But, like, his... His July numbers, 15.4% median K rate, 7 point, the walk rate's good. I get 7.4% walk rate, but he's not getting strikeouts. He's getting hit pretty hard. It's hard to make a case for him other than like maybe like a squirrel finds a nut every, every, every once in a while. But that's kind of a hard premise to, to, to back the other side. So like my question to you, Scott, is like, what are, how how would you play Washington here? You, you yeah. I guess you're just looking for like, hey, I just I'm just a dog player, and this is I'm gonna play this dog here. Yeah. Well, I think if you're gonna play Washington, you just play the over because you're just gonna hope they score some runs, and you know you know Corbin's gonna give them up. Listen, I don't know if Corbin's Keuchel. I was fading Keuchel every start he had, but I think he's getting damn close. I mean, he he's 
It's weird, though, because you look at his game log, he actually pitched pretty well against the Mets this year. I, I think he shot them out one game or gave up one run, and then another game he gave up two. Um, I just don't think Lightning could strike three times. Um, but I think the only way you back the Nationals would be just play the over and hope they score three or four runs. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and the thing about when I was like, you know, I always try to find reasons to back both starting pitchers and both teams and all that kind of stuff and then weigh it out after that. And the Mets are nine and four and Scherzer's 13 starts, but the four losses had nothing to do with Scherzer pitching poorly. Those four losses that the Mets suffered with him on the mound, he allowed one, zero, one, and two runs in those four losses. And that means that, you know, in all likelihood, if Washington's going to win this baseball game, Corbin's going to have to have his best start of the year or maybe his second best start of the year. Uh, Jeff mentioned how he started in one game uh, earlier. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that if they're going to win this baseball game, are they going to be able to, you know, shut this team down with Corbin on the hill and then that bullpen come in? And I just don't think they do. I, I like Jeff's team total over. And uh, again, like I said, I locked in with the Mets minus a uh, run and a half minus a buck 40.